Hello guys, so welcome to our course. This is Mustafa Abdurrahim, the instructor of this course. And uh, I'm gonna start by the course objective. So the title of the course is Digital Design with uh, DHDL. So, you know, the course objective should be from the title that we're gonna learn the digital design, basically the design. And uh, we're gonna also design using DHDL, okay? That means there are other ways of design. That's right. So uh, the course objective actually, or this slide that you see on the screen here, you know, summarize the basic way to design a circuit. And basically you can use any one of these uh, methods by itself. And you can use all of them, okay? Because you can detect errors or one of them is the new uh, that you cannot detect in other and in, in other methods. Okay, so let's you know examine what are these uh, methods for the design, which is basically the course objective, because the course objective is to learn these ways of design. The first one that you may uh, you know already know or have some idea about uh, is just th the theoretical one, the analytical one that you have a design in your head. Okay, you just uh, using paper and a pen, you just draw the circuit, you know, verify it. Or if you have the circuit already, you can analyze it also on a paper and a pen. And this is usually very useful for small designs. Like for example, the circuit in here. So if, let's refresh our, our mind here, our, our memory. So this is a not gate. Uh, this is AND gate. And this is OR gate. Okay, good. Uh, we know from digital electronics that we can build the truth table. So the truth table of that, of that circuit is that one. And basically the truth table give you the idea about uh, the function of this uh, circuit, the relation between the output F and the inputs X1 and X2. And this is very good and you know, very easy to do for small designs. But how about if we have, you know, 100 input and, you know, 50 output circuits? That's not impossible anymore, okay? And for that we go or we do another type of design, which is using simulation or programming language in simulation. And there are many languages that you can, you know, uh, uh, design the hardware using, using these languages, like for example, DHDL. Uh, Verilog, you know, there are many of them, but maybe the most famous ones are Verilog and VHDL, and we're gonna cover in this course VHDL. Okay, so uh, although I'm saying that we usually use this for larger design, you know, very big designs, but let's examine it for a small uh, design, like an AND gate. Okay, so basically, the first step is to write a code that it describes the behavior of the AND gate, the relation between the output of the circuit and the inputs. The output here is, uh, is called Y, and the input is A and B. And easily here, Y, you know, assigned to A and, or, I'm sorry, A and B, the relation is uh, the AND, you know, uh, logic or the AND gate here has two inputs, A and B, and the result of this ending will go to Y, will be assigned to Y. Very easy stuff. Okay, I know that you we didn't go into the course yet and we don't know VHDL yet, you know, so that's why I just, you know, give you a very simple example here that you can just read and understand, oh yeah, this is making an end gate. The second step is to write what's called test bench, you know, which will make the simulation. Uh, and in this test bench, we put inputs, we, know, we put values for the inputs, A and B, and then when we run the simulation, we will see the output Y, how it behaves according to the changes in A and B, or how, how to, to change to the values of A and B. So if, you like, if we read here the test bench, you know, uh, if we you know, just uh, examine that part of the test bench, which is uh, the most understandable part, in here we are putting values for A and B, the inputs. So for example, A equal to zero, then uh, B equal to zero, then we wait for some time. Okay, and we're gonna see uh, what happened during that time to Y. 
then we put uh, a equal to zero, then uh, b equal to one, wait for another one, one, one nanosecond. Then we continue for all the possible combinations. Of course, we know that if you have two inputs and each input is one bit, then uh, you have four possible combinations, zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. Okay, so let's now run the simulation and see. Here is the output of the simulation. Here is A, here is B, and here is Y. So let's change the color. So if we have A equal to zero and B equal to zero, we know that and the gate should give us zero. If A equal to zero, B equal to zero, we know that and the gate should also give us zero. Now, if A is equal to one and B is equal to zero, we know that the AND gate should also give us zero. And finally, when A equal to one and B equal to one, Y will be equal to one. Okay, so now we designed and we know for sure that our design, you know, makes the correct uh, behavior or the desired behavior, which is the AND gate. Okay, uh, the third way of design is just, you know, voting or testing using the hardware, okay? Uh, we were not gonna do that in our course because it's a virtual course, it's an online course, but it's also the, a, way of, a way of, uh, you know, testing your design rather than, you know, a simulation. And we do also this when, when, the, uh, when, the, when the design is small enough, okay? This, is, this would give you the best result ever because you know, all the errors that may happen in simulation or, you know, I'm sorry, or the perfectness uh, of simulation or behavior and dimensional analytical modeling can be, can, you know, can be avoided here because in real world, there is delays, there is, you know, many other, uh, you know, uh, stuff that will impede or may make your design not correct. Okay, out of hand, of course, you know, but it should, of course, uh, you know, uh, overcome such uh, restrictions or limitations, okay? If you are in, in a company that makes a design, you will do all of them, okay? Even if the design is very big, and usually, it usually is. And in that case, the design usually is a hierarchical design. So you, it's, it's composed of small circuits. Then you can, you know, analyze these small circuits using the and them, okay, or using simulation. Uh, then you can also, after connecting all these small pieces together to construct the overall design, you can still do simulation, but of course you cannot do paper and event anymore. And then uh, after doing simulation, okay, looks good. Then you send your design to a factory, a foundry. Okay, then it will fabricate this, makes you some test chips. You will take these test, test chips and test your design with some inputs and you know in advance what should be the output. If you get the correct output, okay, good. Let's continue and for the production and you know, uh, reduce for us maybe 1 million chip of this. And you may find some problems. Then you debug, you know the problem, you may change the design, you may change something. Maybe your design has some something wrong that you, could, that you couldn't detect using simulation. You fix it. Send again to foundry until you finally get, you know, uh, uh, some success with your test, you know, with with with, with some with some design. Afterwards, you go to for for production and produce, you know, whatever uh, number of of chips of that design. Okay, guys. So uh, in our course, we do the first and the second one. Of course, we will not do the third one. Okay, but this gives you an idea about wh what kind of skills or what kind of knowledge that you should learn out of this course. So let's continue with uh, the revision uh, in, in future videos about, you know, the first chapter, you know, which is the prerequisite for this, uh, for this course. It will just cover some basic concepts that you should know about, you know, binary numbers in general. Okay, see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.